Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Andrea Hernandez. I am the marketing and small business coordinator for the Garland Chamber. Um, and thank you for joining us this morning as we're going to listen to Craig Sheaf with Texas Security Bank talk about prospecting and business development. Um, I want to introduce our bold speaker sponsor, uh, partners first, Sean Cass with Texas Security Bank. Uh, Sean will also introduce our speaker. And uh, just a quick reminder before I hand it off to Sean, uh, if you have any questions throughout the presentation today, please submit them in the chat feature. You will have time at the end of the presentation to answer those questions. Uh, but Sean, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that uh, you took time to be here this morning. I really uh, uh, appreciate this partnership with the Garland Chamber, with Andrea and the Bold Speaker Series. Um, I feel like I know just about everybody um, on, the, uh, on the screen today, but Texas Security Bank is a locally owned community bank. We focus on uh, servicing uh, owner-managed businesses. And with Craig uh, being our speaker today from our our bank, uh, I'm going to kind of go into the introduction and it'll, it'll feed into to my introduction, but I have the privilege today to introduce our speaker, Craig Sheaf, um, who is our president and CEO of Texas Security Bank. Craig's not only my boss, um, more importantly, um, he's my friend and mentor uh, for the last uh, 13 years. So I'm really excited to uh, present him. Craig's been in banking um, just over 30 years uh, serving middle market banking, uh, including the experience at Wells Fargo and Bank of Texas before founding uh, Texas Security Bank. Texas Security Bank is one of the fastest growing, most profitable, but profitable banks in the nation uh, with just under a billion in assets. The bank operates with a, a single focused mission, elevating the champions of free enterprise. Um, that's a, that's a, a big statement with a lot packed in there. Uh, but that is our mission is to elevate champions of free enterprise, which each and every one of you on this call is today. TSB has been featured in Forbes, D Magazine, D CEO, the Dallas Business Journal. And most recently, we won a Silver Stevie Award for sales and customer service. Very proud of that. Craig has been featured in Fortune Magazine and was a finalist for D Magazine's Innovation in Finance. So I am super excited today uh, for you guys to get a taste of what we get a taste of every day. Um, and Craig, uh, take it away. Okay, well, thank you, Sean. Um, I was thinking about this as I was going through these slides. I hadn't looked at them in a while because uh, we were in shutdown mode, but the, the timing is actually excellent as we start to creep out of this uh, pandemic and shut down and dust off our sales processes. Uh, I know at least for us, um, dealing with paycheck protection and dealing with all COVID protocol and things like that. Um, the sales process got shelved a little bit. So it's time to, to get refocused on revenue generation. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about sales uh, leadership, the sales process, and sales management. Those are um, three distinct things. Um, but the main thing, it, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in here that uh, are associated with the EOS process and, and, and traction. And one of the components of EOS is to look at your organization and, and recognize what are the core processes uh, within our organization. One of those should be the business development process. And, and uh, you got to start somewhere and you got to be able to document that process and uh, in order for it to be duplicated throughout the organization to be able to train up uh, young people who are getting into biz business development and be able to look at it uh, and uh, make continual improvement with the business development process. So let's see. All right, so our objectives today uh, is to distinguish between sales leadership, sales process and sales management. Uh, to review the functionality of a CRM. And we recently, over the last year, went from uh, utilizing a database called BusinessWise to uh, focusing more on Salesforce and uh, a functionality with, within uh, LinkedIn called LinkedIn's uh, Sales Navigator. 
um, but there's certain core functionality that really needs to exist within any uh, CRM uh, or database, and we'll talk a little, little bit about that. And so that's really critical to the business development uh, process that you have a platform, CRM platform. So we'll also review the sales process, at least our sales process. Every organization's sales process is going to be a little bit different, um, but we'll share kind of the components of ours and some of the common components that should, uh, exist within a sales process. And at some point at the leadership level, um, you need to create a, a sales process that fits your organization. We'll talk a little bit about one of the main components is making that phone call. Um, how do you do that? Um, we'll also talk about preparing for an appointment. Um, that is a sales activity, that face-to-face -face meeting or in today's world, uh, Zoom meeting. Um, how do you prepare for that? What are some of the key components, best practices for that. Um, we'll talk about uh, the sales management process, um, discuss ways to add value on, on every call. That's really, really critical um, because what you'll see in this process is it's a never ending loop. And the only way that loop in the sales process uh, gets broken is number one, if it's an organization that you shouldn't be calling on, there's not an opportunity for a sales there. Or we fumbled the ball and we failed to add value uh, with each one of our, our sales meetings. So uh, a lot of the discussion comes from two resources that are uh, very, very good books regarding selling and the sales process and how to execute certain components of the sales process. Uh, the first one is The Blueprint. And this was a book that, um, and I, I forget how I came across Reggie, he, he uh, actually led one of our speaker series, I think probably about eight or 10 years ago. And it's a very brief book, um, but it was really confirming a lot of the stuff that we'd kind of stumbled into on our own uh, regarding the sales process. So that's an excellent book. If you're a sales professional, I absolutely would recommend it. You can get through it pretty quick. Um, there's probably a lot of things in the book that are discussed that maybe you're already doing but turning it into a process so that it can be repeatable, it can be consistent, it can be scaled as your organization grows. The next one is Gap Selling. This is a book that uh, I recently finished. It was recommended by one of our team members and it's exceptional. It is an exceptional book and there's some redundancies between the two books, um, but uh, it's on Audible. I didn't encourage everybody to get it, but it's the concept of gap selling and very quickly, and we'll talk about it a little bit more uh, here in a sec. You know, the, the main objective when, when you're dealing with a prospect is being able to do the homework to understand their current state and to be able to interview that, that prospect in a way that you understand where they are in all facets of their business. And then having clarity on what their desired future state is for each of the components of your business. That is really part of the art of good selling. And then how does your organization or how do your products bridge the gap between current state and future state and helping them realize the cost of not getting to that future state? All right, so we'll talk about sales leadership here first. And this is really important because we're assuming that each one of us want to create an organization that is a world-class sales organization. And you can think about organizations that are in your orbit, companies that, that, that you deal with, that, man, they're just a really, really good sales organization. There is a correlation, I think, between exceptional sales organizations and, and exceptional customer service organizations. I think they, they uh, go hand in hand. But the point is, is it has to start at the top. I deal with lots of businesses where they have a chief revenue officer uh, and are a head of sales, and um, that's all well and good. Um, but the sales culture really has to start at the leadership level. And so a leader is somebody, this John Maxwell, who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. That's leadership. It's like, we're going to take that hill, let's go. 
and uh, as opposed to kind of sitting back and, and pushing people. So um, I, I just always encourage business owners that I'm dealing with that uh, they, they really need to play a big role in, in the sales organization and, and having a sales leader who uh, can show it can be done is very valuable to the rest of the team. So leadership is making your organization's mission, vision, and values connect uh, with every sales professional's individual purpose. Does the purpose of your organization in, inspire your team? Because a lot of the things that we're talking about doing, the habits that we're talking about doing, don't come naturally. Um, uh, you know, you can do the sales process uh, for a little while, but we're always going to have that tension of pulling back to comfort and complacency. Salespeople are human. They deal with, they get tired of making calls and things like that. But you got to figure out what the gap is in their current life too. Where are they trying to get to? Um, what is their why? And showing them that doing these things, learning to be comfortable, being uncomfortable, uh, is worth it at the end. Hopefully, you've created a why for that sales uh, person. Salespeople usually like money. They like nice things. They like a certain standard of living. And, and reminding them of why they're doing what they're doing uh, is, is really, really critical. So, so from a leadership standpoint, knowing your salespeople why and showing them that the way to get there, the way to bridge that gap between current state and future state lies within execution of this business development process, okay? Um, being an encourager, obviously, developing documentation and forever improving your sales organization process. So document, a documented sales process is really, really critical, right? Um, you want to be able to focus on the behaviors. Uh, what, are, what are the highest impact activities that can help uh, a, a salesperson be successful? Are you measuring the correct things? Are you measuring it the correct way? All right, so for me, um, I know we've got a lot of Texas Security Bank people on the call. The biggest thing for me, there's really two, two things. The, the first is what's the number of face-to-face -face meetings that you've had with business owners over the last week? Existing customers, prospective customers. And then also, um, how many of your calls were the second call? That tells me something, okay? It's one thing to get that first call but how often do you get that second appointment? And that says a lot to me about how well uh, a salesperson is doing, creating value, adding value uh, for that business owner um, that they got that first call with, all right? Uh, developing, documenting, and forever improving your uh, hiring process, okay? You're never gonna win the Kentucky Derby with a plow horse, that's just a fact, okay? And so we're looking for thoroughbreds, we're looking for studs, um, people who are motivated, people who, who recognize the value of the sales profession, providing ongoing and forever improving training uh, for each component of the sales process. So as you'll see, the, component, the sales process consists of lots of different components. It's making that phone call, scheduling that appointment, preparing for that appointment, researching a, a, a prospect, um, uh, uh, running the process themselves, managing their calendar. So being able to provide training in those areas. And then always making sure that you stay on top of, you know, are, am I giving uh, our salespeople the resources that they need? So for example, um, recently we uh, engaged LinkedIn Sales Navigator, um, which ties into Salesforce, which is a, a CRM, uh, and it tracks uh, activities more efficiently. It also helps uh, business development people do queries of databases to find, uh, based on a certain criteria, the ideal uh, prospect profile, right? Also developing documentation uh, uh, regarding an incentive compensation plan. Um, business developments do a lot of this dirty work because there's, uh, there's a pot of gold at the end. <laughs> and, and so making sure you have an incentive compensation plan that's lucrative for top producers, uh, but we don't want it to be lucrative for mediocre producers. That's, that's the art in developing a good comp plan in my mind. 
uh, expecting that ownership and executive uh, leadership are the champions. So it starts at the top, as we talked about, integrating business development throughout each department in the organization. So there's certain operational areas that have to understand what the main thing is. And, and uh, keeping the main thing, the main thing, you know, in a for-profit organization is revenue generation. And so what can we do to leverage our departments to make life easier for the sales uh, people? And a lot of times you have silos created in an organization and, and customer service and sales are at each other's throats and accounting and sales are at each other's throats. Um, but a, but a world-class sales organization recognizes the value of, of the salespeople, holding people accountable, and everybody needs to know their score. Again, you guys use traction. Everybody's got a number. We, got, we have to be able to provide information on what a good week looks like so that a, a sales professional can be diligent. They can hit their numbers for the week. They can put their head on the pillow at the end of the week, knowing that they, they, uh, that they had a good week. What is, what is the key activities? And then obtaining a commitment. Um, and um, so uh, a sales leader is able to look that uh, salesperson in the eye and say, what's your commitment for the quarter? What are you committing to? There's a difference between trying and a commitment, right? When I got married, I made a commitment. And that's a, just a different level. Uh, they didn't, you know, when I gave my vows, I, they, they wouldn't accept, well, I'll try my best. No, I want a commitment. So that's important. Hey, and then as we said, showing them that, that, that it can be done. So I right, talk about the sales process a little bit. What are we trying to achieve? That's sales leadership. What are we trying to achieve with the sales prop process? Um, as we said, to build a world-class sales organization, to optimize the likelihood of putting the salesperson in the right place at the right time. So as you'll see, there's a cycle that exists within the sales process because so many times, uh, that business owner <laughs> or that prospect is not, it, the timing's not right. So how do we create a system, a process where we're going to, we're going to increase the likelihood that we are in the right place at the right time. All of us have, have one business have had sales, uh, because we were in the right place at the right time. So this process, um, should, should have that in mind. Okay, we want it to be duplicatable. When I started in banking, nobody taught me sales. You just went through the credit training process and all of a sudden you found yourself out there on the lending floor having to make calls on business owners and chief financial officers. And uh, we don't want that in, in our organization. We want to show people how it can be done, give them the confidence uh, that they need to, to know that they can do it. I want to create an unbreakable cycle to eliminate false and forgotten follow-ups. How many times do your salespeople make a sales call and there's no follow-up, okay? And in our organization, we rate each one of our prospects, A's, B's, C's, and D's. And D's are don't call anymore. And it's important that the rest of your organization know that's a D so we don't waste time on D's. Um, but an A is some, somebody that I want to reach out to uh, uh, at least quarterly. A B is somebody I want to touch at least twice a year. And, uh, and a C is once a year, we'll, we'll touch base with them. Um, but the key to moving people from C's to A's is adding value on those uh, on the calls. And we'll talk a little bit about what that looks like. Uh, you want to, uh, the process should ensure every member of the business development team knows exactly what their role is and what a good week look like, looks like. And obviously what we're trying to do is maximize shareholder return and the team members' comp compensation, and we want uh, the, the a good process will also increase the velocity of the development business development process. And what I mean by that is how long does it take to to, to take a a company from a lead to generating revenue for our organization? Closing that time period uh, is something that we are always evaluating in our sales process uh, to make it more effective. Uh, and um, we'll talk uh, a little bit about the components of the sales process, but for, for 
let me just say for us what, what, what that is. One component of the sales process is that initial letter, our email that goes. What does that look like? Is it intriguing? How do you, how do you create that, All right? The next is a phone call. So after we send, send an email or letter within 24 four to 48 hours, there's a phone call. And sometimes we, we're able to talk to the person with the purpose of scheduling an appointment or we get voicemail. What do we do in, 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 those, uh, in those circumstances? And then uh, if we don't uh, hear back from or talk to that business owner, we're gonna follow up with in 24 to 48 hours and we're gonna do a drop in. And, and, and go to, to their place of business and see if we can get five minutes. Now, I understand that's been uh, interrupted in, uh, in the, uh, the shutdown world, but that is something uh, that hopefully we're going to be able to get back in some form. And so we go from that email to a phone call to a drop in, and that, that's how it runs through our process. That's the components of, of our uh, sales process and the follow-ups are the glue that keeps that whole set cycle uh, going. All right, so this is another John Maxwell quote. You'll never change your life until you change something in your day, until you change something you do daily. The secret to your sex success is found in your daily routine. And so um, this is a big challenge with a lot of salespeople and frankly, a lot of uh, people in general is just good time management. And so this is a picture of my calendar some years ago. And you can see that you really have to, you can't run a sales process by deciding you're gonna make calls that, that week. Um, uh, because what'll happen is things will jump onto your calendar. What I suggest is prior to the start of each week, two to three weeks in advance, prioritizing your calendar and blocking out time for business development. And these are time periods that are forever. And so for our business development officers at the bank, we, we encourage them to spend 70 to 80% of their time on business development activities. So their calendar might look a little bit different than this. For our bankers, uh, we encourage them to spend 20 to 30% of their time on business development because they have a lot of other, other things going on in terms of writing underwriting memos, taking care of customers, things like that. The point is, is you have to have this time scheduled. It's not Monday morning, hey, what, what am I gonna do this week? Well, I gotta make some calls. No, it has to be scheduled, all right? Um, so planning it, uh, the week of, like I said, just a guarantee of, fa of failure. All right, so just talk about some functionality of a, 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 a CRM. Again, business wise is one, Salesforce is one, but you wanna be able to obviously do searches and do queries. So, so doing a query within Salesforce um, based on certain criteria. Um, uh, for example, we look at what industries, SIC codes, the size of the company in terms of revenue or employees, whether they own their building or, or lease their building is a good criteria. And so we come up with a query and that query um, produces certain results. And here, this particular query is, I wanna look at my A's and B's and make sure I'm calling them um, within those, those uh, stated time periods. And so it'll, it, the query will produce names, right? And um, uh, you can drill down into individual names and you can see uh, certain key uh, pieces of information. Again, any, any uh, uh, CRM worth its salt uh, has this information, but uh, you wanna be able to see who the people are within the organization, who's the owner, who's the CFO. Um, we, we capture other user fields that are unique to us, like who's their current bank, when was the last time uh, that we called on them. Um, that's all very important information. And then you also want to be able to track activities. So you see down here at the bottom here, what are the recent activities? And uh, you guys probably even know this company. <laughs> uh, and um, I think he's involved in True Velocity, which I heard somebody talking about earlier. But, but anyway, so uh, uh, be able to see what, what the activities are so that as we're planning for an appointment, uh, we can go back and read uh, about other conversations that we've had with this particular uh, prospect. 
Okay. All right. Um, so then the other thing is if we're doing those components, which I mentioned, the phone calls, the drop-ins, um, I can see within that, that CRM what follow-up activities I have. So when I'm sitting down and planning my week and looking at what activities I need to move forward, I have fresh inventory here of follow-ups that, that need to occur, All right? So you can see here, face-to-face -face drop bys phone calls. It could be sending emails is another component. And, and ultimately what you should be able to, at the end of the week, you can run a query of your activities and see how you did. Did you hit your numbers? What type of activities? And, and within our organization, we break activities down into prime activities and total activities. And total activities can be phone calls and email and the like, prime activities, our face-to-face -face meetings or uh, drop-ins, okay? Where, where what we're trying to do, the drop-in is really brute force on forcing the issue of, of having that face-to-face -face meeting. Again, this isn't gonna apply to each of your businesses. It's, it just applies to ours. The point is that there is a process, right? And so it's really important that that sales uh, person uh, knows what a good week looks like. So when they go back to this activities page here, they can know whether or not they had an activity. And by being diligent, it de-stresses the sales process. I know what my numbers are. I hit my, my numbers. I trust in the processes. It's going to give me the results. All right. And so for us, you know, we, we like support personnel uh, to be uh, leveraged for, for that business development person to be able to send out emails, um, uh, making phone calls to try and schedule appointments for the officers. A commercial banker is trying to do 15 to 20 uh, prime activities um, and follow-ups, uh, and then a business development officer, uh, 30 to 40. That's a lot, um, and I know I've got some business development officers going, we're not doing that. Uh, and then uh, uh, you don't, you know, what we say here is never have the weekly sum of drop-ins, face-to-face uh, -face prime or new prime, uh, be less than 15 for, for bankers and 40 for business development officers. So that's hoofing it, okay? And so some tips uh, for uh, calling officers just to make this process work well, as we talked about, get it locked out on your calendar. If it's not scheduled, the likelihood of it happening is a lot less because we all know that you can show up to work and if you don't have your day planned, things can just take over and you get to the end of the day and it's like, I have not accomplished anything. So putting it on your calendar is critical. Uh, reviewing completed activities uh, on a daily basis, push more tasks to administrative assistants and portfolio managers, writing a handwritten thank you note, always, always, always. Uh, if somebody's gonna give you some of their time, sending them a note is important. Uh, making sure you already have your marketing co collateral um, information in our case on the Academy and speaker series and bold series, um, having that already uh, set up using your administration executive assistant to do that. Um, I encourage people to connect with the owner that you're going to meet with on LinkedIn um, because you can find out a lot of very, very important information that, that can help that, that initial appointment go smoothly and be comfortable and if you can find a connection, a common connection, it's also it's it's uh, just uh, creates a warm way to begin the conversation. Um, obviously, doing as much research on the company as possible, because when we go out for that first appointment, what we're trying to do is blow them away with how much we know about their company, and for them to for that meeting to be over and for them to think. That's a different kind of banker. I mean, he knew he knew about my sales process. He knew about my inventory process. He knew a lot about my industry. He knew, knew a lot about my uh, my management team. How long we'd been in business. He knew that we leased our building. We didn't own our building, um, because again, the purpose of that that initial meeting, face to face meeting we have, is we want to go through a discovery of their current state and eventually have that lead lead to a discussion about their desired future state. 
regarding all the components of their business, revenue generation, succession, um, uh, where they are industry-wise, product offering, all those things we want to know, and we're going to help them close those gaps. That's the objective there. All right. As I said, seek to know more about the prospect than any other salesperson. Uh, a sales tip is, you know, periodically working late uh, and coming in on a Saturday to clean up administrative things and uh, order it in order to free up more prime time during the week for business development activities. I encourage our salespeople to utilize breakfast and lunches uh, for referral sources or centers of, of influence and um, and all the other time is uh, kept available for, for selling. So we talked about one component um, of, of the sales process being that email or that message on, on LinkedIn sales navigator. We're not gonna go deep into this. It's, it, there is an art to this. I'd encourage you to read chapter 16 of um, gap selling. Um, how do you make an intriguing email or message that is going to get responded to. Nothing's going to work 100%, but how do you put the odds in your favor? So I'd encourage you to get uh, gap selling, give it a read, um, could be transformational for your organization. So that's one component there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that initial phone call. So we've sent the email, we follow up within 24 to 48 hours with the phone call. Um, and the goal of that initial phone call is we're not trying to sell the bank. We're not trying to sell our product. What we're trying to sell is a face-to-face -face meeting. And, and the other little tip on, on when you're gonna sit down and make calls or do any of these activities, these components of the sales process, I encourage people to batch process, right? Because um, uh, especially when it, it comes to phone calls, when you're making phone calls, that first phone call you make is always bumpier than the fifth phone call that you make. It's like when you go out and hit golf balls. I hit golf balls all the time. And those first two or three shots are different than my 30th shot. It just becomes so much smoother, so much uh, easier. So batch processing will improve your performance on, on these type of things. And phone calls a big one. Hi. So uh, a couple components of a good initial call. Th these should be these should be pretty brief. Okay, state who you are and the purpose of the call. And when you talk about who you are, this should include a mini value statement. All right. And so an example of a mini value statement is, oh, this is Craig Shee from the the CEO and founder of Texas Security Bank. Um, Purpose of my call is just to let you know that uh, Texas Security Bank's sole mission is to elevate the champions of free enterprise, people like you. And the way that we do that is through continuing education for business owners and their key players. And we found that we play a significant role in the growth and the, and the strengthening of, of the companies that we deal with. And I'd, I'd like to, to schedule a meeting uh, take about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm available Tuesday at three or Thursday at four o'clock. Which one of those work best for you? All right. And, and you got to just make it your own and recognize that there could be some objections. Now I'm happy. I'm with Frost Bank. They do a great job. Now Jamie Miller's my, my, uh, my banker with Veritex and I've been with him forever. All right and recognize that there's really, of all the objections that they could have, there's two, three, or four objections that all, are all the same, maybe just different varieties. And so, for example, with that objection, hey, Jamie's a great guy. I recognize that. Um, I just like 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and I promise you, if I don't add value, you don't ever have to, to meet with me again. So which works best? Tuesday at 3.30. Or Thursday at four. So that's the that's the gist of that in in, in developing uh, uh, continuing developing that skill of of being effective on the phone is just an ongoing process for business development people. Okay, eighty percent of the phone calls will end up with voicemail. If you get a voicemail again, just who are you? What's your purpose? And then do a follow up within twenty four to 
48 hours, and um, uh, then the cycle uh, just continues. If you don't hear back from them after doing another uh, follow-up, rate them an A, B, C, and D, and get back with them based on that rating, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually, or don't call them at all. Uh, if you speak to the contact and are unable to sell, the call suggests that you'll reach out again next quarter and do it. So many, so many salespeople say, well, I, how about I give you a call in May and uh, in order to schedule an appointment? At least sell that and then do it. Call them in May and it's like, oh yeah, we did, we did, uh, we did say we would get together, okay? Uh, if you determine the company's not, obviously rate them a D. All right, so let's say we get the appointment. We sold, the, we sold them on the idea of getting together. What does that look like? All right, you start out by in your mind defining what's the best possible outcome. So for me, the best possible outcome is they allow me to start to build an information file about the organization containing certain documents and information that is really important for me uh, in my discovery process and in my ongoing questioning of the business. So financial statements, bank statements, account analysis statements. Uh, industry information, um, because what I'm trying to move this this ball uh, forward to is being able to do a proposal, and that proposal is going to contain things about their current state and their desired future state, and how are the product offering and service offering of our organization going to close that gap for them. And as best I can, I'm going to quantify in dollars and cents how much closing that gap is going to benefit their organization. And there's a lot we do from an educational standpoint. If you go to Texas Security Bank's website, information on running all components of a business, HR, sales, branding, uh, that as I go through the discovery process, I will see where their needs are and I'm going to try and provide them with information that's going to close that gap. And as much of that as I, I can do before we've ever uh, sold them any product or, ser or service, much value that I can add in that regard uh, between now and when they become customers, the higher likelihood that, that I'm gonna get the sale, uh, sales uh, to begin with. All right, uh, prepare gift bags. We like to leave merchandise that has utility. A lot of times when, when we make a sales call, it could be hand sanitizer with our logo. It can be a mouse pad. It can be a, a Yeti with our branding. Um, be, I love that type of stuff um, because uh, if it's, it, it could be post-it notepad with our logo. If it's front of mind, if it's on their desk or in their pocket, the more that, that we can get our brand in front of them and, and them thinking about us, the better. Um, all right, so you're going to show up. You're going to explain who you are and why you're there. Um, you, you've asked them for a certain amount of time. You want to keep to that. Um, share your value statement and what the goal going forward uh, is simply to be a resource, and find ways to add value. Um, and hopefully it'll be a lot more. You'll show them it's a lot more than renting them money and giving them a place to, to park their cash in terms of being a bank. Ask questions associated with the history, the current state, the future state, uh, so you can begin closing the gap. Ask questions about um, their current banking relationship. Uh, uh, so here's another art to the sales process, asking high impact questions uh, so that they know, they can see that you've prepared uh, for the appointment and high impact questions that make them think that are gonna create little pain points um, um, is, is really, really uh, important to the sales process. And then show them how you're gonna work with them on relieving those pain points. This adds value, uh, helps them identify problems um, that you might be able to help them solve. Don't ever overstay. Uh, if I've told them, hey, you know, this is gonna be 15 minutes, this is gonna be 30 minutes, if I start to go over, I will stop and I'll say, hey, we, I, I promise you 30 minutes and get permission to go on um, uh, or schedule a, a follow-up call 
Um, but don't say it's going to be 15 minutes and 45 minutes later, you're still sitting there in your office. And then take leadership. What are the next steps in the process, all right? Um, and and uh, manage expectations on, on here's where we're going. All right, then you just log your calls, uh, take credit for the, for the very important prime activity of that face-to-face -face meeting, uh, and, and make sure, as we talked about, adding value on, on each call, and I'll, I'll show you what that might look like. And then the handwritten thank you note. All right, so adding value. Right. As we said, it's helping prospects close the gap uh, between where they are and where they say they want to get to. Where are they in their life cycle? Uh, uh, introduction to other resources and points of influence is really important. Uh, a lot of times somebody may be looking for a building. and I've got three or four great uh, brokers in the area that they need to talk to. Are they trying to uh, redo their partnership agreement and, and just uh, things like that, resources for them. You want to be the person that they call for anything, anytime they need help. Referrals, man. Uh, if they're in a certain line of business and you have relationships within that business and you send a prospect their way, that adds a lot of value. Uh, free training in an area of uh, expertise. And so we do that with our speaker series and bold series and, and, and our TSP Academy. Um, training for them uh, and training for key players within their organization adds a, a tremendous amount of value uh, in terms of strength, helping them strengthen their organization, uh, providing them in, information about their industry. Or maybe you read an article about something in their industry and, and, and you send it to them. You add value by letting that person know that, they're, that you are thinking about them. Books and articles, as I mentioned, free analysis. So so a lot of times I'll say, hey, like to look at your treasury management, get copies of your account analysis, um, understand that it's not going to cost you anything. Or uh, same thing with their current banking arrangement in terms of their line of credit or their building loan. Let me take a look at it, see if I can save you some money. Maybe we can structure things a little bit differently to improve your balance sheet, create some working capital for you. As I mentioned, the high impact questions, rich conversations, all right? People may not remember your name. They may, may not remember what you said. They'll always remember how you made them feel. And if, if you have a rich conversation with somebody, whether it's about a book that each of y'all, you have read or an experience or something like that, those rich conversations uh, make people feel a certain way and you want them thinking of you uh, uh, as often as possible. And, and if you make them feel good, uh, you'll do that encouragement. I always, I love giving business owners encouragement because I know what they, what, they, what they go through. And it's not for the faint of heart. I know what it's like uh, to sweat payroll. I know they know what it's like to sweat payroll. So encouragement is important. Compliments, uh, congratulations on the incredible business that you've built, what, what you and your team have built. Uh, develop information, developing an information file, which I mentioned. Be interesting. Um, read books. Uh, great salespeople are always reading so that they, so they can find themselves as in, in as many of those rich conversations as possible. Uh, and there's others out there. Okay. So one thing, uh, and this is just sales management. So we're talking about sales uh, leadership, we're talking about sales process. Part of sales management is a scorecard. So we've identified, and this is always getting improved and improved and improved. Um, what are the activities that we think are important? And this scorecard has changed. This is, this is dated. We, we continue to improve how we measure things and what we measure. Um, but this is a week, what, what a weekly scorecard might look like. Um, this is for our sales team, and we've got uh, certain activities here on business development activities, which include drop-ins, face-to-face, and new face-to-face uh, -face primes per off calling officer. Uh, we want to we want to have 12 of those. I know I said 15 earlier, but I always get asked for a little bit less to have some margin. And and so you can see these are the activities, and it's either green, yellow, or red. And if we start getting more red than we should, which this particular scorecard appears to have more red than it should, then in our our EOS process, 
that goes to IDS, which is identify, discuss, and solve. It's an issue, so we're going to solve solve that issue. And so that is a lot, and it was real fast. Hope, hopefully, it gives you some ideas. You know, one of the things that I'd encourage you to do is, if you're not connected to us on LinkedIn, we're always posting things on LinkedIn uh, regarding training. We built and uh, we we spent literally hundreds of thousands of dollars building an information repository uh, for business owners on our website in terms of resources, like I mentioned. I encourage you guys to check that out too. So that is it. And I'd be happy to try and answer any questions I can. Well, thank you, Craig. Uh, we do have a couple um, in the chat feature. One is, how are you doing meetings with prospects now? Um, on premises or Zoom? I know that some others responded here, but we wanna hear from you. What are you guys currently doing? Yeah, like you guys, uh, we're figuring that out. Um, it, as you saw, you know, that drop-in um, was, was a big component of our, our business development process. Um, so we're still trying to figure that out, um, but we are utilizing Sales Navigator and obviously using Zoom a lot. I think Zoom is going to be a component because when I look at how many Zoom meetings I can have, which are face-to-face -face meetings per day versus how many I can have in the old environment where I was driving office to office to office to office, um, this is a lot, lot, lot more efficient. So we're scheduling lots of Zoom meetings. Um, we're starting to get where people, you know, have been vaccinated. They're comfortable with you coming to their office. Um, that office appointment is real valuable because, again, as part of the discovery process, there's nothing like walking into a business. You get so much information just looking around. And um, like if I walk into a business and in the front office, there's a stack of old yellow pages, that says something, right? <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, or if everything is neat and tidy and every everything's in its place that says something to me about it about a, a company as well so we're still learning um but we're trying to have as many face-to-face -face meetings as we can we we consider a zoom meeting a face-to-face -face meeting um, another question is what's an example of a high impact question uh well the the, the biggest example is the conversation about where they are and where they want to get to. There are so many business owners that are so busy in their business that when you talk about their desired future state regarding personnel, regarding their collection, collections process, their sales process, their brand, what do they want to be known for? They haven't thought about those desired future states. Um, succession. Are you preparing the business to sell it or are you preparing it for succession? And either of those two options require work to be done eight to 10 years ahead of time. And so, so those are high impact. Any, anything that really gets them thinking. Um, and if you, if you can dive down into each one of their processes, you know, uh, an enterprise in it, everybody's enterprise, business enterprise, is really just an amalgamation of all kinds of different processes, customer service process, how do we have opening account process, boarding a customer, shipping, inventory, uh, accounts receivable, all those are processes. And so having conversations about each one of those processes, looking for pain points, desired improvement in those processes, I would say are all very, very high impact because long after you've gone, that thing's going to be sitting there like a, a little earwig <laughs> irritating them. It, they'll be thinking about it. That's, that's, that's high impact. All right. Um, well, we don't have any other questions in the chat. Um, you guys, if anybody wants to submit another question, you have a few, um, like a minute or two to, to submit that. But Craig, thank you so much for this valuable information. It was so compact, but very neatly organized. And it was just really easy to understand and follow you uh, doing your presentation. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for answering our questions this morning. 
Um, thank you to Texas Security Bank for being our bold speaker series sponsor. Thank you, thank you so much for that. Um, okay, yeah, if anybody has any uh, uh, questions after the fact, um, Sean knows where to find me. Yeah, thank you so much. And just a few reminders from the Garland Chamber. Uh, tomorrow morning, April 28th, uh, from 7.30 to 9 a.m., we are hosting Adriana Cruz for our legislative briefing. Uh, she's the Director of Economic Development and Tourism for the Office of the Governor. Uh, so if you want to listen in, she'll be giving some resources that are available for the state of Texas. And we also have our first in-person event on May 7th in downtown Garland. So you can join us for the 12th Annual Business Expo to promote, connect, and educate about your business and Garland businesses. You can find more information on the Garland Chamber website. That's garlandchamber.com. But thank you everybody for joining us this morning. This concludes our event. Oh, and also the recording will be available to you after. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Craig. Great job. Thanks.